So thank you for joining me, uh, Kevin. If we think back to October when initial reports came out regarding Chelsea's serious interest or the development of potentially signing Christopher Nkunku, of course Chelsea were in the Champions League at that point. Could he have imagined that when he actually joined up with Chelsea, they would have another new head coach, but no European football to speak of heading into next season? I think it would have come as a bit of an unpleasant surprise, to be honest. But, you know, it's not a deal... As far as we know, he's tried to pull out of. It's a deal he's been aware of uh, for some time. It seems that Chelsea were quite active in pursuing him in terms of being prepared to overpay the release clause to see off competition. So, you know, I, I think he would see it as an exciting move. He would see it as the logical next step for him as a player, having excelled in Germany for several years now. And, you know, with Mauricio Pochettino coming in, there is a great coach to work for and work with. So I think you'll be excited on that score. So yeah, Champions League is important, but I think for a guy like Nkunku, it's not necessarily the be all and end all. I guess we'll come to this a little bit later in the conversation regarding his positioning and kind of potential role for Pochettino. But I do wonder, and I felt this about a few Chelsea attackers in recent years, ones that have come in, because things have been so bad on a pro, like an end product type of um, point of view in terms of Chelsea just being awful in front of goal, uh, the lack of, of productivity. Is there kind of that incentive for someone like Nkunku to really step up and become a, a bigger star at Chelsea because he's not joining a team like the best Chelsea teams of recent years? Well, I think he's a guy who affects the game anyway. You know, he's somebody, if you look at when he played in a wider role or a more withdrawn role for Leipzig, he was an assist machine. But from the moment that Jesse Marsh at the start of, well, last season, not the season just gone, but the season before, from the moment he moved into a central role, he scored goals. And so you've had two different kind of eras of Nkunku at Leipzig. The guy who was very creative, who made a lot of goals for people, but didn't score so many himself. And now the forward Nkunku, who scores goals, still makes goals, but scores them in buckets. And, and you know, this is a guy who missed a chunk of the season with injury, not only the injury that kept him at the World Cup, but also he had a muscle problem after coming back and was still joint top scorer in the league. So... You know, he was player of the season the season before in the Bundesliga. And the season just gone, he scored 16 league goals. And he got well over 20 in all competitions. And in the final, in the DFB Pokal final um, against Eintracht Frankfurt, he scored the first goal and he made the second. So he's a big game player. He affects the game, produces goals and assists in numbers. And I think there's a lot of talk about Chelsea needing a number nine. He's not a traditional centre forward. He's not big and strong, but he can play that role and he's played it very effectively. I know for Leipzig, this is kind of quite usual that they're used to losing their big talent. Some of those to Chelsea and in, in Timo Werner in recent years and, and being able to replenish the squad quite well. I just wonder from you know someone who, who covers the Bundesliga and has watched Nkunku's development in recent years, from a talent point of view, how big of a loss to the league is Nkunku going this summer? He's the league's best player. I genuinely believe that. And I've believed that for a while. I, I think he would walk into the Bayern team or would have. And I think they've been very interested in him in the past. Um and, you know, people will look at it. And I, I said I was excited about Timo Werner. I was excited about Kai Havertz. And I know people are like, oh, well, I haven't really worked out. It's like, well, hang on. They've won a Champions League. Havertz got the winner in the final. Havertz got the winner in the Club World Cup final. Havertz has scored big Champions League goals in other games. And I, I, I think with Kai, it's about finding his best position. And I'm not sure ever, anybody's quite sure of what that is right now. But he's still a very young player. Timo's always been a streaky striker. It was either going to work or it wasn't. And, and he had some good performances, I felt, in general, but didn't get the goals that he would have wanted. But I think Nkunku is the real deal. I think he is somebody who will... I, I just can't see how he doesn't have a really good effect on that Chelsea team. I, I think he's absolutely somebody who 
could take to the Premier League because he's got pace, he's got skill, he can play in tight spaces, he's got awareness, he takes penalties, he takes free kicks. You know, there are so many ways he can affect the game. For a guy who's relatively small, he's pretty good in the air as well, actually. So I just don't see why it wouldn't work. Obviously, Chelsea are in flux at the moment. A lot of players, nobody's sure what the best solutions are at the moment. But if it settles down and if Pochettino can get them playing, don't see why Nkunku can't be successful. I watched his performance. I think it was the night... Because I remember that story about Chelsea being in for Nkunku came out in around that October time. And I think it was before a Champions League night where Leipzig were playing Celtic, if I remember rightly. And I, I think I watched the game. I had to write an article about the game. And I think Nkunku scored two goals. I think he may have set up one. It was just, it was an incredible performance because it kind of showed that versatility. And I guess I, I know a word that's been used to describe Nkunku and a lot of players now fluid you know that there is a sense that this is a guy who pops up in different areas does different things and I think in that game he was sort of off the shoulder running through on goal providing more of that pacey striker but then later in the game he was dropping deeper he was switching play for for Simakan to run on to um down the flank I guess going into the next question is is defining that role his best role because it you know you reference Kai Havertz this is a big conversation that's been had at Chelsea in recent years in terms of what Kai Havertz is I guess that's going to be a big thing for Pochettino and for Nkunku to to come to in terms of to get the best out of him now at Chelsea yeah and I think you've always got to look at the background as well so if you look at Havertz the spell he's had at Chelsea Let's be honest, they, they've been a mess in terms of coaching changes, what's the strategy, change of ownership. You know, Frank Lampard coming in not once but twice. And I, I don't think a guy like Lampard, who is, you know, hugely inexperienced as a coach, for example, is he the guy to get the best out of a player like that? So, Look, I, I I think if Pochettino is going to be there in the long term, and I think he probably will be, then I think he's the kind of guy that would absolutely look at somebody like Nkunku and think, yeah, I could use him because he's a really intelligent footballer, really skillful footballer, but also really committed. Uh, I mean, he's a guy that wants to play, wants to wants to win games. He has fun. You know, do we see the the dancing and the celebrations? He blows up the balloon when he scores goals, all of that stuff. But he's a serious man and he's mm. a serious footballer. Yeah, we're going to have to change the colour to a blue balloon. He can't be blowing up any red ones at Stamford <laughs> Bridge. That won't go down very well uh, with supporters. It's interesting, you know, looking at the coaches he's played under at, at Leipzig and, and as you've kind of described the way kind of he's evolved as a player, maybe the way different coaches have, have used him. Um, is there kind of, I, I know goal scoring is obviously quite important in the game and that's going to be the thing that sort of stands out those numbers but you know watching him as as you have is there is there one side or one season you've seen of him where it's like actually this is my favorite version of Nkunku or is it is it the one right now yes yeah, the one right now I, I like I prefer this Nkunku I prefer the Nkunku that's always trying to make things happen that can run in behind but also drop deep and I think I, I think sometimes Pete, the the one thing I would say is that he's generally played in a two up top for Leipzig, so that's the way they play. So Marco Rosa plays this four box two, so it's generally him and Werner or him and Silva or you know it'll be one of the two. So that's obviously very different to him being up front on his own. So I I I would worry if that was going to be the case if they were just going to stick him up front on his own and. And say, right, get on with that. So I don't think that's the way forward. And we don't know how Pochettino will will play it. But I think, you know, as part of a forward line with people around him, he can do loads of damage because he'll pop off little one-twos. He's very aware. There was a great, the Soboslai goal in the cup final was sensational because Nkunku drew everybody towards him, then found the pass through about three players to find Soboslai who had a free shot on goal. So... He's creative, he's aware, and he will get you goals as well. So they've got to work out what the best position for him is. I think they've got to do that all over the pitch at the moment, Chelsea, because the squad's too big, as you know better than me. You know, that squad is enormous, and there isn't a clarity 
in terms of how they want to play or which players they're going to use. There has been, well, I think there is there is PTSD amongst Chelsea supporters in terms of thinking about Timo Werner in, in the main when we contrast back to what was it 2020 when Chelsea signed him uh, from Leipzig and there was high expectations this was a guy who had scored so many goals in the Bundesliga and I mean I am a lot more critical of Werner's time I, I understand you know you've seen the best of Werner at Leipzig and to be honest I'm not I'm not at all surprised he's flourished back in an environment he's very comfortable with and I think that you've, of course Chelsea have been a mess but there is that kind of discussion that has happened and I don't think it's it's totally unfair in terms of the adaptation from the Bundesliga to the Premier League in terms of the tactical differences in terms of what attackers have to deal with in the Premier League um, is that is that the one concern maybe for you along with the Chelsea kind of shambles that has been happening in recent years um, because no. it, yeah, it's, it, we have no, seen Werner really. and Sancho struggle yeah but I think you have to take it case by case Kevin mm. De Bruyne has done okay from what I can yeah. work out uh, Erling Haaland's done pretty well from what I can work out. Um, I, I think this whole idea of the Bundesliga attack, I think, is a nonsense. Because, look, the Premier League has more talent in general. Is it a massively different league? Is it massively more? You know, some players struggle to make the leap. Of course they do. But they struggle to make the leap to different leagues in general. It's a new country. It's a new club. Especially if it's a club where... There are a lot of competing ideas and coaches change and what have you. That can be tough. But Timo would say himself, I imagine, that he didn't score enough goals. He's always been a confidence player. He's always been somebody that needed to feel comfortable to score goals. And I think it just didn't work out for him. But he tried. Boy, he tried. You know, the effort was always there. Just didn't quite happen for him. That happens. You know, you have players who go to places and it doesn't quite happen. Jaden Sancho went to a club in flux who didn't really know how to use him. Lost his confidence completely. We don't quite know if he's going to get it back, but he's a hell of a player. But just probably at the wrong football club. So I, I do think you have to take it case by case. My feeling is Nkunku will be a success. I mean, I think in general, I know people get frustrated with Havertz in some ways. I think that's kind of the way he plays the game sometimes in terms of how he looks when he plays the game. But I, I think, you know, he's had massive moments in the Chelsea shirt. Yeah, I, I think that the the concern for me, I, I, or the concern for me with players like Werner is, is and it's, it's a problem that Chelsea have had in terms of identifying players and they excel in one way at one club and then you bring them in and you expect them to do the opposite of what they've done previously. And I think that, that has been a general problem at Chelsea. Werner at his best, is a, is a transition player. You know, he is someone that ne- plays yeah, a more direct absolutely. style of, of game. And Chelsea, particularly under Thomas Tuchel, passing game. And he'd have to take out like three or four defenders. And, and that would never have been his game. And I, I, it is my encouragement with Nkunku particularly is that he, for me, from a technical point of view, operates, at least my impression... Not, knowledge is not as good as yours but like in terms of those tighter spaces looks more confident so when he is confronted by a busy penalty area or a busy or, or a low block it, I get a sense he could excel more than say Werner did yeah well that's where he comes alive in those tight spaces um, and he is capable of of ghosting past defenders I mean he, again you saw it in the cup final his first goal yes it takes two deflections the shot that goes in but he's beaten two players to make that space to shoot in the first place. So, yeah, he's absolutely capable of that. He is a better player than Timo, I would say. Um, technically, miles better. But Werner in transition is a real danger because he's got so much pace and he's willing to work. And, you know, when he's on it, he can score brilliant goals. But I think Nkunku all round is a better player. And a more nuanced player, a player who's capable of doing more things. So, yeah, I, I, I see no reason why he shouldn't be successful. So, you know, I know we've talked about Timo Werner a fair bit, but I, I do think that was just about a confidence player not quite having the run he needed of goal scoring and therefore not quite hitting the heights that we thought he might. I don't think that necessarily means Nkunku won't be a success. I also think Werner 
at the very start of his Chelsea career was also playing off and, and seemed to be working well with Tammy Abraham. And then very quickly, Tammy Abraham was kind of taken out the team. Havertz started playing as not really a false nine. I think that's quite a lazy way to define it. But he started playing as the nine for Tuchel once he replaced Lampard. So maybe that, we, as we've said, there, there's the relationship and chemistry and those connections that players need to, to kind of excel. I guess the final thing is it just kind of assuming Pochettino for a lot of his career, he's, he's like the 4-2-3-1. It seems to be a, a formation that he likes and, and Chelsea fans are already trying as difficult as it is because there could be so much sort of flux in the squad over this summer. Um, an assumption that maybe Nkunku could fill, say, a number 10 role behind a centre forward. Would you say that is a preferable role for him or, or there are other areas you'd say actually maybe better? I think he can play either. I think you could see him coming in off the left, but of course, Mudrik, you would think, would want to play. That That's where he needs to play, really, because he's a winger, Mudrik, really. So he needs to come in off that left-hand side if he can. But I think Nkunku can play that role. He can play that 10. But it's about fluidity, right? It's about him having license to play off another forward and potentially do some damage that way. So they've got to get, the combinations right they've got to find the right player to play with him but you know I could see a situation where if you had Havertz and him floating around together doing damage having one twos I mean Havertz might go you know we don't know what the situation with him is going to be but if he is one of the ones that stays you could see them dovetailing he's a really clever player and Kunku you know the, the the most players I think he could link up with pretty well yeah hopefully and and Chelsea fans have been crying out for one of these signings, particularly in attacking sense, to, to work out. So hopefully Nkunku can really perform well under Mauricio Pochettino. So um, I think there is reason to be excited and hopefully it does work out. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much uh, for giving me your time today uh, to come on the podcast. As we do with all of our guests, just a, a chance to shout out where people can find your work. And I know obviously over the summer, there's going to be a bit of a hiatus until the Bundesliga resumes, but uh, now's a chance to shout it out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Twitter probably at Kevin Hatchard is the place to find my stuff. I'll be doing a lot of writing for Betfair over the summer and uh, presenting stuff. And I think I'll be popping up on TalkSport a fair bit as well. Perfect. Go and check that out. Links uh, in the description box below. Thank you for listening to the View from the Bridge podcast today. Sure, we'll be back later in the week to dissect all the latest Chelsea news as the transfer window fully gets into motion. We will see you again very soon.